Hello all, in this video, I am going to discuss about rotating line method under projection of straight lines. Let's see where this method is used. Okay. So the, the, the case 1, 2, 3, that is line parallel to both the plane and line parallel to one plane and perpendicular to the other plane and line parallel to one and perpendicular to the other plane. So these three cases we have already discussed. Okay. So one common thing in these three cases are during the projection you will be seeing the true length either in the front view or top view in all these three cases. See for instance in case 1 you will see the true length in both front view and top view. In the case 2 you will see the true length in one view and point in the other view. In this third case you will see the true length in one view and projected length in the other view whereas in case 4 you will see the projected length both in the front view and the top view ok see for instance so this is my straight line so currently the straight line is parallel to HP and parallel to BP ok so first I am going to apply the inclination with respect to vertical view something like this ok see now it is inclined to vertical plane and parallel to horizontal plane ok now what I am going to do is I am going to apply one more inclination with respect to horizontal plane something like this ok so when you project it you will get something like this so you will get the projector length both in the front view and top view ok so in the projection of straight lines we will start with the view where the true length is visible and after that from there we will draw the projected length whereas in this particular case that is case 4 the true length will not be visible in both the front view and the top view so in that case in order to obtain the projection of front view and top view we will be using a method called rotating line method so the rotating line method has two important steps the first one is project and second one is rotate ok let's see how to solve this case 4 problem using rotating line method ok let me draw the reference line first so this is my reference line and we are going to use the first angle projection as I already told so in the first angle projection this will be my vertical plane and this will be my horizontal plane okay. so let's assume that a straight line is one end of the straight line is some distance above the horizontal plane so that means that point will that end will be somewhere here ok so it's in the front view right so I am going to name this as a dash okay. so the corresponding end is some distance in front of V so that in front of distance will be visible in the top view. so I am going to mark the distance and I am going to name this as small t ok so let's give a notation for this distances so this ABO distance is nothing but above HP and this distance is in front of V. So I am going to name it IFO in front of. Okay. So I am going to write here ABO IFO. Okay. So which is nothing but one end above horizontal plane and the same end in front of vertical plane. Next, so assume that the line is inclined at an angle of alpha to horizontal plane so if it is inclined at alpha to horizontal plane you will get something like this okay. 
so this is nothing but alpha and this alpha is called true inclination the true line is inclined at an alpha to the horizontal plane so the line is inclined at an angle of beta to the vertical plane so this is my beta okay let's write the terms here the alpha is so the length of the line so as given in the question so let's term that which is nothing but TL so the true length will be same in the front view as well as the top view so this is my TL so it's okay so next I'm going to introduce one more concept and that is called the locus of ends. Irrespective of the angle of the inclination, so the ends of the line will travel in the straight line. See for instance, uh, let's name this as my B2 dash. I'll explain the reason for the names little later. This will be my B2. So the corresponding point in the top view. Okay. So now from each end I am going to mark, make a horizontal line something like this and this line is called my the locus of the ends. So this is my locus of B dash, this is my locus of A dash, locus of A, locus of B. Okay. So from the ends I have drawn the horizontal line, so that line is called the locuses. So the meaning of the locus is so this is the inclination with respect to horizontal plane so when you do that one end of the line is will be in locus of a dash the other end will be at locus of b dash but what will happen because of that beta inclination this line will take an inclination something like this so because of this the line will look much shorter in the front view than the actual true length so that sh the length will get shorter but the same b the other end b so that will fall somewhere in this locus line so the end will not go above or below the locus line if the inclination is very high so that means if for instance if the inclination is 90 degree it will look something like this if the inclination beta is zero it will fall something like this but when you trace this end, so irrespective of the angle beta, the end will fall somewhere in this locus of B dash line. Okay, so this will be very useful during the projections. Okay, so next, so we will be going to carry out the first step of the rotating line method that is the project. Okay, so to do that, I am going to write some rules. See, for example. If you are starting from locus of A dash, then you need to project till locus of B. So that means if you are starting from one end of the front view, because the dash represents the front view, so then you need to project till the locus of the other end. So it's vice versa. If you are starting from locus of B, need to project in locus of A dash. Similarly, locus of 
B dash. If you are starting vice versa, then you need to project till locus of A. Okay. So this is the thing you need to follow for the projection. So I am starting from locus of B dash. So then I need to project till locus of A. So this is my locus of A. So the project means always it will be. It will be vertical something like this. So let's name this as B1. Okay. So next we need to project this B2 point. So you are starting from locus of B. We need to project the locus of A dash. So something like this. So the corresponding in the front view. So this will be my B1 dash. Okay, so now we got one more term that is the A dash to B1 dash, A dash to B1 dash, which is nothing but front view length. Similarly, A to B1, this distance, which is nothing but the top view. Length. Okay, so we have completed the first step that is the project. Next, we need to carry out the rotate. In the rotate, what you will do, keeping a dash as the center and the radius is a dash to b1 dash, that is front view length. So, that is the radius. You will make an arc something like this. Okay, so a1 a dash is the center and the radius is the front view length you will make an arc and similarly for the other view A as the center and top view length as the radius you will make an arc something like this ok so that arc will hit somewhere on the locus of B dash the locus of B so this point is nothing but B and B dash so, so the B and B dash will be always fall in the straight line, similar to A A dash, because the end projectors will always fall in the straight line, something like this. Maybe in my case, it is not as straight as expected, but always it should be straight. Okay. So next, finally, you need to connect. A dash B dash which is nothing but your front view and A B which is nothing but your top view okay so this is your front view and this is your top view so I drawn with red color mark next if you look at this the angle of the front view that red line so that is bigger than alpha so let's take this as say theta. So theta is nothing but apparent inclination. So you need to remember that apparent inclination in the front view. So you need to remember that the apparent inclination will be always greater than the true inclination alpha. And this is say phi. So the phi is Parent inclination in top. Okay, so we completed this. Okay, next. So you will you may have one more distance. Sometimes in, instead of mentioning this, they may mention this particular distance. So that is the yobo distance for the other end. Okay. So. So let's name this as the other end above distance, the other end in front of distance. One more distance that is nothing but the distance between the end projector. You know, right? So this is the projector one, and this is the projector two. So it is nothing but A dash to B A line and B dash to B A line, the distance between this one, and this is called. PD. So 
this is called the unprotected distance. So that is other one important thing which can be measured for all the problems. Okay. So this is how you need to apply the rotating line method to take the projection for this case. Okay. So now I have mentioned as much as 12 parameters or 12 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But in order to complete this problem, all the 12 parameters are not required. But the combination of any 5 data is required. See, for, so you can use the combination of that 5 data and the concept of rotating line method and you can apply this method in order to complete the projection. See for example, so in the rotating line method, I told to complete the project first and then to rotate. Okay, so you look carefully. So I have the true length line. So from the true length, I projected and rotated. So instead of that, I should that you have the front view, a top view length. Okay, so see A to B. So the A to B is nothing but the top view length. So if you have the top view length, and the top view angle that is the apparent inclination can easily draw this A to B line. So from there, if you want to do the process, then what you need to do is from the projected length you need to rotate first, then project. Okay. So I will write it here. From true length, you need to project, then rotate. If you do that, you will get projected length, which is nothing but the front view or top view, irrespective. Okay. But if you have the projected length, you need to do the reverse process. You need to rotate, then project to get the true length. Okay. So look at here. Assume that you have the top view length. So from there, you need to first rotate, then project. So to get the true length. Okay. So you need to apply these two rules projection of the line inclined to both the line by rotating line of the okay i hope you